Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to the Book Doctor's, Doctor's YouTube channel. So, we were talking about um, blurbs. Everybody asks us, how do we get a blurb? Yeah. And, and uh, I didn't understand before I got into the publishing business how much weight. Wait, wait on the weight for one second. Because I want to define a blurb. I was on the phone with someone this week. What's a blurb? They didn't know what it was. Let's define our terms. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> A blurb. A, a, bl a blurb is that quote that you see on the front or back of a book from someone else saying how great, interesting, funny, smart. This moving. is the greatest book ever written. Yes. Ariel Ekstad is a freaking. This is the greatest <laughs> book ever written. Ariel Ekstad's a freaking genius. Exactly. In quotes, hyphenated. Uh, who would give you that quote? Uh, Jane Austen. Jane Austen, author from of Back Pride from and the Prejudice. Dead. Back from the Dead. That's a great blurb. Yeah, that would be. If that you, would that be the. That is our the, number one advice. Yeah. If you can get a blurb from Jane Austen, do, do it. it now. Okay, now would you so like blurb, to explain? So blurb. A lot of people when I say blurb, do you have a blurb? They like, oh yeah, you mean the uh, the explanation of what the book is? Exactly. No, that's not a blurb. Exactly. That's a pitch or a log line. That's other uh, that's terms. That's why I had to stop I you, even though that. it seemed rude. No, it was rude, <laughs> but I don't care. Okay, now you can explain the weight of the blurb. Ah, <laughs> weight of the blurb. Uh, I didn't even uh, before I got in the business in, in the writing business, uh, the book business. I just would just pick a book and I'd like it and if someone blurbed it, whatever. Oh, someone wrote a blurb. But no. When you go to a publisher, when you go to an agent, when you go to a bookseller, and you have a great blurb, all of a sudden you are bona fide. Right. So I want to talk about something that happened the other day, which in a certain way is not going to be the case for a lot of people here, but I still want to talk about it anyway because of how it happened. So I'm mentoring a young writer. Oh, yeah. And she happens to work for a well-known writer, and she's written a novel. And I said, have you asked the well-known writer for a blurb? And she said, what? Can I do that? And I was like, of course you can do that. Would he say yes? Well, you're not going to know unless you ask him. There's right? a good chance at some point in his life he was a young writer. Exactly. And not probably so famous and had to ask somebody for getting a blurb for him. And it literally had not even occurred to her. And she's working for the person. Like, they're right there. And I got an email this morning. Guess what? Amazing news. Got he said yes. So here's the number one rule of blurbing. You have to ask. Ask. Because blurbs don't magically appear in your inbox. And unless, unless you're terribly telepathic and yes. it's like, Ooh, hey, I'd like to write you a verb. If you have Jedi a minds, a verb, a blurb, a blurb. <laughs> if you have Jedi mind skills, right. I think I'd like so, to write you a blurb. So without now. the Jedi mind skills, you number one, you have Jedi? to ask. That's a Jedi. Jedi, Jedi. You have to ask. Number yeah, ask. two, you have to figure out who you're going to ask and who you have access to. Yeah. That's the next thing. Because it's got to be somebody appropriate. I mean, it can be anybody, but the more appropriate it is for your work, the better. The better. So if you happen to be working for a really famous writer, that would be the first person to go to. But if you don't, yeah. then you have to think about other means. So we, our favorite example of this, which we I'm sure have said in other videos, David was in a writing group in San Francisco with a bunch of mostly unpublished writers at the time. Yes, who, one of those unpublished writers yes. was a, a doctor and very handsome and super nice and an awesome writer. Unpublished, as I said. Uh, but he turned out to be Khaled Hosseini. He wasn't Khaled Hosseini, a famous writer. He was just Khaled Hosseini, the super handsome, nice doctor at that point. He was an awesome writer. Yeah. But then he wrote a little book called Kite Runner, which sold approximately, I don't know, a billion copies and got made into a movie and everything. So then when our book came out, I asked him very nicely, Khaled, would you be willing to give us a blurb? Be very kind to, to, to give us that. And he said, well, sure, David. It's one line. It says a must have for every aspiring writer That's it. on the it cover. It probably took him yeah, seven seconds to write the blurb. Exactly. Uh, but, but so joining a writer's group yes. 
being in writers' yes. communities, yes. if you're writing children's books, being a member of SCBWI gives you access. Whatever group you can be in with other writers, Nano Rimo, the list goes National on. National Novel on, Writing National Month. Novel. The list goes on and on. That networking piece of being a writer becomes huge when it comes to getting a blurb. And honestly, when we go to a bookstore, when we first were doing this uh, with a central guide to getting a book published, and People thought, oh my God, you got Halet Hosseini? Right. Wow, in that case. And hmm. that brings up booksellers and librarians, yeah. which who can also be great yes. people to go to to get blurbs. Totally. If you live in a town with a well-known independent bookseller, that bookseller, getting a blurb from that bookseller can be incredibly meaningful to an editor or publisher. If you are uh, a librarian or know librarians and in that network, yes. librarians, particularly when it comes to children's books, are really, really powerful. So connecting to people and asking them, and then also there's the whole world of experts. If you're writing yeah. nonfiction, right. 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 you know, a professor in a university who who is... A, part of your field. Like David just wrote a proposal for um, a memoir, oh, yeah. but he went to a professor who is uh, has written books, academic books, around the subject that the memoir is about and asked him for a blurb for the book and he got a magnificent blurb. If you're writing a story about garbage, you might want to go to the head of the garbage union. Okay, so. A lot of people think, okay, you got to get your blurb before your book comes out. But I always get blurbs before I even approach an agent or that's, or a publisher. I go into the publisher with three blurbs. That's We should have said that at the beginning. Well, that's why I'm saying it at the end. Yeah. Because we didn't say it at the beginning. So, I mean, it just makes a huge difference when an agent looks and you've got a blurb from somebody. It sets you apart from the herd. The unwashed masses of writers are trying to get yeah. a book deal. Blurbs yeah. come at the querying process, yeah, right. ideally. That same blurb might end up on the back it of your book. Very well But might. if you start the process with a blurb, it's gonna make the whole process that much easier. And people think that the publisher's just gonna get them a bunch of blurbs. I, I, was, I was lucky with my first book. I did get a couple of blurbs from my publisher. But uh, when our very first book about Satchel Paige, we couldn't find anybody to blurb us. So we decided we wanted Bob Costas. We decided to start small at the very top of the mountain of and, people. And this story is really where just asking yeah. really comes that's, to fruition. That's what I wanted. Because I was like, Bob Costas, why are you what calling are you Bob saying? Costas? He's never going to call us. God, books. He, Bob Costas, why would he want to do why anything he, for and us? And I was like, well, I'm just going to call him. And I knew he was really into Satchel Page. Right. Super passionate about him because he, he would have so, done it otherwise. So I, mean, I, mean, we, I went after him, I went after him, I got, I circled the wagons, I got his assistant to places, I went to NBC, I called him NBC, can I speak to Bob Costas? Er, no. But yes, they put you through to his assistant. I, I, that was another, it was a whole other, it was a lot of rejections, a lot okay. of people hanging up on me, that's the point. Okay. And we finally found somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody, that's okay. how we finally got to him. But we asked, I asked Everybody that I knew. I was not shy. You can't be shy about getting a blurb. So finally we got Bob Costas and he's like, well, sure, yes, I'll, I, I would love to write you a blurb. And we're like, what? He wrote such a great blurb. It turned into the introduction. To the book. How do you like that? So be, ask politely and be persistent. Politeness, persistence. Uh, and don't be afraid to ask somebody who you think might never in a billion years do it. If you've gotten a blurb, Please put yeah, let the us story know. in the and comment comments, section please. so other people can learn about how they did it. How you did it. All right, everybody. See, See you at, at the, the bookstore. Book exactly. Right? Who knows? Yeah. What? I opened my, took a sharp inhale, which led you to think I was going to say yeah, something. I did, but you have nothing. No, I got plenty. I just oh. was waiting for you because I'm a kind and generous okay. I also think we need to wrap it up. Yeah, but there's a couple more things. Okay, go ahead. Okay.